Hi there, I'm Peter Gazzino here for TD Productions with John Durrell, a world traveler and holder of a PhD in economics. Here with you today in not Busan, but in Tokyo, Japan. I got the opportunity to meet up with my old friend John here, whom I've known for many years. And uh, we actually met in Busan. Yeah, how, how did we meet? I think uh, we were on an elevator and bumped into each other and you were talking about the phenomenon of yellow dust. And I just arrived in Korea and it seemed very random. And I thought, that guy can make yellow dust seem interesting, so he must be a pretty interesting person to talk to. Yellow dust, it's better than blue dust, but not as good as green dust. Possibly, but don't quote me on that. So, uh, what brought you to Busan, Korea, actually? Uh, after graduating college, uh, did the corporate world in D.C. for about three months. That was all I could take. I hated it. Hated the corporate life. And um, at the time, the yuan was really strong in Korea. And, you know, you could get hired very easily. Hey, was pretty decent back then. This was 2007. Yeah. So I figured I would try it, went out on a limb, got hired at a little uh, shady little hagwon over in uh, Jongsan. And at the time, you know, 2007, there was a lot of foreigners around there. It's very cool spots. And we were always hanging out in Hayundae Beach. And I really enjoyed it. So I um, got that job my first year. And then the year after that, I got a, a college job. And uh, I loved it. So for, I guess, how many years were you living in Korea for total? I think total was uh, three years that first stint, like 2007, you left in 2011. Um, then uh, had a second stint from 2014 through 2018. So I'm going back to that uh, job at a little college in Busan called Dongjure Akya. Where were you living in between those times? Um, I lived in Philippines for a year, volunteering at an orphanage, and uh, Boston for, I guess, two years. Where do you live now? Now I'm in uh, Clearwater, Florida, and I, uh, yeah, so I, I teach down there, and I really like it. All right. Uh, what do you teach there? Do you teach English? Uh, I teach economics. So what brings you to Japan here? Uh, good question. Uh, it was an economics conference where I presented some of my research on um, basically mining uh, Bitcoin with excess wind energy. So when there's too much wind, there's too much wind energy, and a lot of it is wasted because uh, peak supply doesn't reach peak demand uh, with wind energy. So you have excess wind energy, and instead of it being wasted, you can basically use it as free electricity to power Bitcoin miners take the Bitcoin mined through that process and then sell it um, to generate excess profits for the, the wind farm. Do you uh, foresee cryptocurrency being used to pay uh, uh, amounts, large amounts of expats who want to travel? Do you think that's a more viable currency for them yeah. in this situation? Um, Considering a lot of them would be using their computers, you know. For expats, um, the benefit would be basically you take your money wherever you go and you don't have to you know, pay the Western Union fee or the bank card fee or the airport. Um, I swapped out some, some dollars for yen in the airport and I wasn't paying attention. I think they probably scammed me for about 15%, which is a small thing, but if you're maybe uh, like an expat or maybe like a migrant worker, um, sending money nice. back to the family, that's a big issue. That yeah. can be overcome with cryptocurrency, um, but we need to see more widespread adoption. Um, right now we have widespread price increase, but that's more 
uh, seeing cryptocurrency as an asset, uh, adoption or be for using cryptocurrency as cash, as a, as a, as money, um, which is lagging behind. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out. We're still relatively early. Um, most of these cryptocurrencies are like, you know, less than five years old. Bitcoin itself is approximately 14 years old. So we're still very early in the, the timeline of cryptocurrency. So, so right now you'd probably uh, suggest that people ask to be paid in maybe the local currency yeah. by traveling or yeah. maybe their home country's currency if they're traveling from country to country based on... I mean, me Working personally, I, right now, I would rather be paid in Bitcoin because we're in the middle of a bull run. Yeah. So the price is climbing, but I think your employer wouldn't necessarily agree to that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, be paid in your normal currency unless you could get... It's all about timing. And there's basically four-year cycles with Bitcoin. Well, thank you very much today, John, for uh, sitting for this interview. Uh, it's been pretty enlightening. Thank you, guys. Uh, from Tokyo, this is Peter Gazzino. Well, it seems as though the widespread use of cryptocurrency as a means of exchange between employer and employee may be a few years away. And I guess we'll also have to contend with those scammy exchange rates for different currencies. How do you feel about that? Have you ever been ripped off? And what do you think of cryptocurrency? What do you know of it? Have you used it? What do you suggest? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, if you liked this video, remember to like it with a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For TMD Productions, I'm Peter Gazzino.